Hello, this is Anand Paul and welcome back to Start Pro VHI Advanced Training Series. This is part 2 of Response Spectrum Analysis as per Indian Code 1893. If you haven't watched the part 1 video, I suggest you to watch it first before continuing to the part 2. In this video, we will discuss how STAT calculates the base shear in the Response Spectrum Analysis. The base shear for a given mode, for a given direction, is obtained by using the following equation. Vb equals x into y into z into d where x is the mass participation factor for that mode for that direction y is the total modal mass specified for that direction and z is the spectral acceleration for that mode and finally the d value is the direction factor specified in the load case so let us take a look at the stat file and we will go to the report file in our example the mass participation factor for the first mode is 90.9 so the value for x is 90.9 then the mass or the modal mass used for calculating the base shear will be the modal weight in the x direction that is 1.7187 into 10 to power 4 now the value for sa by g has been calculated by stat for the mode 1 as 0 0.52970 again we have specified the d value in the command to check it we'll scroll up here we have specified the value of D as 0 0.1822. So the value of base shear will be X into Y into Z into D. So which will give us a value of 1536.55 in the X direction for first mode. STAT will calculate the base shear values for each and every mode and is combined using the combination method that we have specified in the definition. So moving to the next topic about the bending moment diagram in the response spectrum load case. If you check the bending moment diagram of our model, I'll switch on the MZ value. From the top view, I'll select a single frame. And if you take a look at the bending moment diagram, you can see that the, all the values are in positive direction. None of the values are in negative direction. What STAT does is that the member forces are computed correctly only at the two ends of the member and the signs of these forces cannot be de determined because the method uses the combination method like SRSS and CQC methods which will cancel the signs of the values. The maximum force values do not necessarily occur at the same time. The stat will consider only the maximum force value for that instant of time. And finally the stat plots a straight line joining the maximum bending moment values at start and end of the joint of the member which will be a positive value. So the STAD is not capable of providing the bending moment values for each and every point in a member. Suppose if you double click on the member and if you go to the shear bending option, if you select the load case 2, the STAD will say that the bending moment and shear results will not be available as the load involves dynamic analysis. So while doing the response spectrum analysis, it is impossible to find the shear force and bending moment values for each and every point of the member. All that we will get is the maximum value at the point where the maximum member force is occurring that to the end values. So you may be wondering why we are providing a scale factor while performing a response spectrum analysis. The spectrum data consists of a pairs of values which may be a period versus acceleration or a period versus displacement. The acceleration or displacement values obtained from the site may be normalized or unnormalized value. The normalization means that the value of acceleration or displacement have been divided by a normalization factor. One of the most commonly used normalization factor is G, the acceleration due to gravity. Suppose the data provided by you is normalized. You have to multiply the spectrum data with a normalization factor as a scale factor. If your spectrum data is unnormalized, there is no need to provide a scale factor. The default value of 1 will be used in that case. If you are providing a scale factor, make sure that the scale factor that you are providing matches the length units that you have provided. Suppose the scale factor is g and the length that you are using is meter you will have to provide a scale factor value of 9.81 or approximately 10. So what STAT will do is that it will multiply the acceleration or the spectral acceleration value SA by G with this scale factor that you have provided. I'll show you in our example. Suppose we had specified a custom spectrum table with custom values of periods and acceleration and currently the unit is meters. So we will have to specify a scale factor of 9.81 as a normalization factor 
to obtain the correct result. Since we use the predefined soil subclass spectrum, we don't have to specify a scale factor. We can either specify it as 1 or just leave it as it is so that the stat will accept a default value of 1. Now let's come to the direction factor that we provided in the x direction as 0 0.1822. The direction factor is the value by which the spectral displacement for the associated direction is multiplied. Suppose we are defining a spectrum command with SRSS combination with values in x, y and z direction as 0 0.7, 0 0.5, 0 0.65 as direction factors. First of all, what STAT will do is that it, it will determine the period of the structure for each mode and then the spectral displacement SA by G for that mode is read from the response spectrum plot. And now the spectral displacement SA by G in that direction is multiplied with the associated direction factor that we have provided. That is D, which can be defined as X direction spectral displacement as SA by G into 0.188 in our present example. Suppose we want to define a spectral load case in Y and Z direction separately. What you have to do is define a load case load case number 3 for response spectrum in y direction and click add. Click yes to continue. You don't have to specify the dynamic weights that we have already specified in the load case 2. All you have to specify is the spectrum command with the code IS1893 and the soil type was medium soil with a y value of whatever value that we want. Let it be, let it be 0 0.65. Now click add. STAD will automatically consider all the loads that is dynamic loads that we are defined in the previous load case. Similarly, if you want to specify a spectrum load case in Z direction, you will have to define another load case number four with a spectrum command in Z direction with the direction factor that you need. I'm deleting this command for the time being. We have completed performing the response spectrum analysis. Now the question is, what is the critical value that has to be used for the design purpose? To obtain the design bending moments and shear forces, we have to create two load combinations for every response spectrum that we have defined. For example, if the load case 1 contains the lead load and lie load case and the load case 2 is the spectrum load case, we have to create a load combination case 3 to obtain the envelope in the positive x direction and further a load combination case number 4 in the negative x direction. Switching back to our example, we will define a load combination case with a factor of 1.1 and response reduction load case with a factor of 1.3 and click add. Again, we will add another load case number 4 with a factor of 1.1 for the dead and live loads and a factor of minus 1.3 for the response spectrum case. We have to use the critical value amongst the two load combinations that we have defined, thus considering the positive effect as well as the negative effect of the spectrum load case. Now the question is how to obtain the vertical distribution of total base shear in a response spectrum analysis, like we obtained in the, our report file in static analysis procedure. Unlike static analysis procedure, it is impossible to obtain the lateral force distribution separately in response spectrum analysis. Since the values from response spectrum analysis are absolute quantities, it is not practical to obtain the total base shear distribution separately in each and every story. Suppose if you want to obtain an approximate distribution value, what you can do is you can add up the shears in the columns about that level for an approximate estimate. If you are to compare the global reaction and the global base shear of the structure in a response spectrum case, they won't match. Suppose we have two modes and four supports in the X direction and in SRSS combination the following result has obtained. For the supports 1, 2, 3 and 4, the total SRSS sum of reaction has been obtained as 96.2 whereas the sum of global base shear will be calculated as 39.8. STAD will add up the maximum mode 1 reaction for support 1 and mode 2 reaction for the support 1 at each and every support which will give us a value of 96.2 whereas in the calculation of the base shear it will add the mode 1 individual maximum reactions and the mode 2 individual maximum reactions and sum up the squares and SRSS the summation values 19 and 35 giving us a value of 39.8. This is due to the fact that the individual maximum moments would not occur at the same time 
and not necessarily with the same sign. So the Bayes shear magnitude is usually much less than the sum of the reactions. So this concludes our video on response spectrum analysis as per 1893. Use the comment box if you have any query on this video. Thank you for watching video. For more videos and updates, subscribe to our channel Online Civil Digital.